So you've been wanting to get rid of your old bulky laptop for a while, but you've never really been able to find a highly portable device that allows you to be productive the way a laptop does. You might have been wanting to switch to an iPad as your main device since its launch back in 2010, but you were always put off by its lack of productivity focused features and its smartphone-like workflow and OS. And then all your wishes came true with the release of the new iPad Pro, which everyone finally agreed could really be your main device. But what now? How are you going to make sure to take full advantage of everything the iPad Pro has to offer? In this video, I'm going to explore the best accessories you should consider purchasing to enhance your experience and the best features of iPadOS to be aware of to fully exploit the iPad Pro's capabilities. What's going on everyone, my name is Gio and welcome back to Gio's Tech Views, where we're all about helping you understand and keep up to date with the latest news trends and devices from the world of tech. So if you too are passionate about tech and want to learn more about it, hit that subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you don't miss anything. In previous videos, I didn't recommend the use of the iPad Pro as a laptop replacement. However, this was based on my personal experience and I'm sure there are many people out there whose use case scenario allows and even encourages the use of the iPad Pro as a main machine. If you're one of those people and are thinking or have already purchased the iPad Pro, stick around because in this video I'm going to go through what I think are the most useful accessories for the iPad Pro to make for the best experience using it as a main machine. A lot of these accessories have features of iPadOS associated with them, which I will also be going through to help you make the most of the accessories. At the end of the video, I will also talk about some other useful features of iPadOS to be aware of to improve your daily use of the device. The way we interact with the device is obviously crucial to its functionality. So the first accessory I want to mention allows you to interact with your iPad much more precisely and efficiently. As you might have guessed, it's a mouse. As I mentioned in a previous video, thanks to a recent update to iPadOS, the iPad now supports the use of both trackpads and mice, which can easily be connected directly through the Bluetooth settings. Although it's not a new feature, I recommend purchasing an external keeper together with an external mouse to allow for faster and more efficient typing. As an external mouse, I'm using the Logitech MX Anywhere 2S, which is a very nice portable mouse which would go perfectly with the iPad Pro. However, probably the best way to exploit these new features and to maintain the iPad's portability is through one of those trackpad and keyboard cases. There are currently two main options of this kind of cases on the market, and I will link them both below like any other accessory I mentioned in this video. The first is Apple's own Magic Keyboard, which looks a lot nicer in my opinion, but is also more expensive. In addition, it provides an actual hardware connection through the pins located on the back of the iPad Pro and an extra USB-C port for pass-through charging. However, it does limit how far the iPad Pro can tilt back and could hamper typing due to the iPad Pro floating over the keyboard. The second option is the Bridge Pro Plus, which is cheaper, however, it does connect only through Bluetooth and does not offer pass-through charging or any hardware connection with the iPad Pro. It does provide more flexibility in how far back you can tilt the iPad Pro, but has a weird push-on mechanism to connect it to the iPad Pro, which feels like it could damage the device. However, there have been reports of problems with trackpad tracking and gestures control. Software updates have improved the situation, but it is still far from perfect. And to quote MKBHD, you should never purchase a device based on the promise of future updates. Nevertheless, it does provide an extra improvement over the Magic Keyboard, which is the presence of a row of function keys, which can be very useful. If you're only going to work with the iPad Pro at a specific desk, another option is to purchase an external keyboard, mouse, and then use the iPad Pro with a standing case or with an external monitor. This gives you a lot more versatility to use the iPad without the keyboard and mouse. In this case, you also have a lot more choice. I don't have time to go through all the mice, keyboard, cases and monitors you could use with the iPad Pro, but I will link some options down below if you want to check them out. In addition to having a lot more choice in this case, you could also have a better experience both typing and mouse use thanks to a larger trackpad or a professional mouse. One important choice to consider is whether you want to use a mouse or a trackpad. On the one hand, a trackpad will give you gestures and more portability because it will fit directly into the case, but the mouse also provides more precise and accurate movements in my opinion. Potential compromise is to use a trackpad case when on the go and then use a mouse when at home or in the office like many do with a laptop. Gestures are another feature of iPadOS which came along with mouse support and I definitely recommend checking them out and getting acquainted with them because they allow for a much better experience and an easier navigation of the OS. I will leave a link down below where you can find all the gestures support in iPadOS which I recommend you check out. Although keyboards have been supported on iPad for a long time, there are now a lot of keyboard shortcuts you can use to improve your experience, which I definitely recommend you should check out. For example, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts you can use in Safari and in the Files app. Remaining on the theme of interacting with the device, another accessory which I 100% recommend is the Apple Pencil. It will not make your iPad more like a laptop, but it will turn it into something that's a lot more than just a laptop. Note taking and drawing with the Apple Pencil are amazing, and it will just add a whole nother dimension to what you can do with the iPad Pro. 
and this is definitely one of the main advantages of using the iPad Pro as your main device. In addition, iPadOS now allows you to do several things with the Apple Pencil and has several features to improve your experience using it. For example, you can double tap the side of the Apple Pencil to switch between tools or swipe up from one of the bottom corners of the iPad to take a screenshot. The last pair of accessory and iPadOS feature that I want to mention in terms of interacting with the device is a little bit less productivity oriented and it's to do with joystick support. Indeed, iPadOS now supports the use of Xbox One or PlayStation 4 controllers connected to your iPad through Bluetooth for gaming. So this is definitely an accessory which would make for an immensely better gaming experience and which I would definitely recommend if you like gaming on your device. Thanks to a USB-C port, you can now use the iPad Pro with most accessories you would use with a laptop. Some of these I think are particularly important to using the iPad Pro as your main machine. First and foremost, I would definitely recommend purchasing a USB-C dongle to expand the connection capabilities of the iPad Pro. I personally use a Satechi USB-C hub which is great quality and I definitely recommend. However, it does have a permanently attached USB-C cable which means it would most likely be left hanging from the iPad Pro when in use. There are other options which stay attached to the side of the iPad Pro, however these have had problems with cases and screen protectors, which means you're going to have to choose depending on the way you carry your iPad Pro. Another small but very useful accessory which I would definitely recommend, especially now that we're still transitioning to USB-C, is a small USB-C to USB-A adapter. These are very small and cheap and can be easily carried in any bag pocket. This way, you can have access to what is arguably the most prominent port for quick file exchanges through USB 6 and the like without having to carry the full dongle. Similarly, if you used SD cards a lot, I would definitely recommend purchasing an SD card to USB-C adapter for the same reasons. Arguably the best update that came to iPadOS together with mouse support was the support for external memory. Thanks to this feature, and because the iPad Pro doesn't come with a lot of storage, especially in the cheaper models, another accessory I would definitely recommend is an external hard drive to store files, videos and photos and avoid filling up the iPad Pro. In terms of external storage, there are two main options you can choose from. Either buying an external SSD or an external hard disk. SSDs are more expensive per gigabyte, but offer much faster storage and have no moving parts. Instead, hard disks are a lot cheaper. However, they're also slower and have moving parts which make them susceptible to failure. Moreover, SSDs are also a lot smaller and more portable. If you can afford one, I would definitely recommend going for an SSD. There are a lot of good options out there, however one I would recommend is the SanDisk Extreme. It is very fast and reliable, however it also has a rugged design so that you don't have to worry about throwing it around. A pen drive which carries both USB-C and USB-A is also a very good accessory for similar reasons to the small adapters I mentioned before. It has a smaller form factor and allows for quick exchanges of files on the go. Again, SanDisk provides a great option for this kind of product. Speaking of files, although it is not yet a full-fledged file organizing system, the new Files app on iPadOS provides a much improved file management experience. It comes with a new column view for easier navigation, it provides more detailed metadata of the files stored and has a built-in downloads folder. In addition, it now allows for folder sharing, file zipping and other quick actions directly through the app. And these are only a few of the new features. I will leave a link down below to all the new features of iPadOS so you can have a look for yourself. The last set of accessories I recommend considering for your laptop replacement iPad Pro is to do with charging. First of all, I would definitely recommend purchasing a high quality long USB-C cable plus a USB-C fast charger to allow for quickly charging your iPad while still on the table like you would do with a laptop. When looking for products that have to do with charging, I personally love Anka products and I think they provide great quality for an affordable price. To keep using your iPad Pro on the go past its better life, I would also recommend buying a large external power bank. Again, Anka provides some great options. This way, you can exploit the mobile nature of the iPad and be able to charge it on the go oppositely to many laptops that can charge through power banks or recharge very slowly. Now, before concluding the video, I just wanted to mention a few other iPadOS features that are not related to accessories but are very useful to know about for a better workflow on the iPad Pro. Firstly, the new iPadOS now provides a desktop class browser, which mainly means two things. One is that you have a dedicated downloads button directly in Safari, where you can easily access, edit and share the downloaded files. Two, websites will now display the full desktop version so you can access all the site's features instead of being stuck with mobile versions. Secondly, iPadOS now allows multitasking, which means you can work and open multiple apps at the same time. This can either happen through split screen or by having an app float over the other. This is great for productivity to be able to access for example data and documents on the one side and websites or email on the other. Another feature which can allow for a better workflow on the iPad is Siri shortcuts. Through the app it is possible to create specific sets of actions that the iPad will take following a specific command. 
This allows to customize your workflow and expands the iPad's capability by creating commands that would not otherwise be there. In addition, many of the stock apps and OS components have been updated in iPadOS and offer a much better experience and many new features. Although I don't have time to go through them all, I suggest you get acquainted with them. And these, for example, include the new Notes app, Mail app, Photos app and Control Center. The last feature I would like to mention is less significant, but I do use it all the time and I think it's very useful, so I thought I would mention it. What I'm talking about is automatic personal hotspot connection. This means the iPad will automatically connect to your known nearby personal hotspots, such as that from your iPhone. I personally often use my iPhone to access the internet on my iPad on the go, so I really enjoy this feature. Overall, I think all the accessories and features I mentioned would be very useful whether or not you intend to use your iPad Pro as your only device. So if you want to hear my thoughts more specifically on the iPad Pro as a tablet, check out my review in this video. Instead, if you're still on the fence about purchasing the iPad Pro as your main machine, check out this video where I analyze the issue of whether the iPad Pro can replace a laptop and give my opinion about it. But let me know in the comments below what your favorite feature of iPadOS is and what your favorite accessory for the iPad Pro is. That's been it for this video, until the next one, I'll see you later.